Your sleeping posture determines how your brain flushes out toxins, how your heart pumps blood, and whether your spine will age like a fine wine or a banana left on the dashboard in July. Whether you sprawl like a crime scene victim or curl up like a pill bug avoiding a predator, your body is screaming a message about your health. And tonight, we're going to translate that scream. Let's start with the position that 40% of the human population instinctively dives into the moment their head hits the pillow. You know it, you love it, you probably did it in the womb. The fetal position. There is something primal about tucking your knees to your chest and bowing your head. It's the universal human sign for, I am safe, leave me alone. Evolutionarily, this makes perfect sense. By curling up, you are protecting your vital organs, your heart, your lungs, your soft underbelly from nocturnal predators. You are also conserving body heat. Essentially, you are turning yourself into an impenetrable biological pebble. But while your lizard brain feels safe, your modern skeleton is filing a formal complaint. Curling up too tightly turns you into a compression machine. When you glue your chin to your chest and hike your knees up to your eyeballs, you are restricting your diaphragm. You are basically asking your lungs to function inside a trash compactor. This shallow breathing means less oxygen is circulating to your tissues while you snooze, which might explain why you wake up feeling like you ran a marathon in your dreams. And let's talk about your joints. If you stay in a tight ball for eight hours, you are stressing your knees and hips and potentially causing arthritic flare-ups before you're even 40. However, before you uncurl yourself in a panic, know that the fetal position has a massive upside, specifically for the snorers among us. By sleeping on your side with your spine curved, you are physically preventing the base of your tongue from collapsing backward and blocking your airway. It is the anti-gravity hack for keeping the windpipes open. Plus, if you are pregnant, this is basically the only way you are sleeping without feeling like you're balancing a bowling ball on your aorta. The trick is to loosen up. Do not be a tight ball, be a loose shrimp. Extend the legs slightly, maybe shove a pillow between your knees to align the hips, and suddenly you have gone from stressed pill bug to orthopedic genius. But perhaps you are not a curler. Perhaps you crave structure. You don't want to hide from the world, you want to stand at attention, even when you are unconscious. This brings us to the rigid cousin of the fetal pose, the log. This is where you lie on your side, arms straight down, legs straight down, looking like a piece of timber waiting for the sawmill. It looks uncomfortable. It looks stiff. It looks like you are trying to win a contest for least amount of space occupied on a king-size bed. Here is the secret weapon of the log sleeper. This is your brain's night shift janitor. While you sleep, your brain literally shrinks slightly to allow cerebrospinal fluid to wash away waste proteins, specifically beta amyloid, the gunk linked to Alzheimer's. Research suggests that sleeping on your side, particularly the log or a loose fetal position, is the most efficient gravity assist for this brainwashing process. You are essentially tilting your head to let the sewage drain out. If you want to wake up with a brain that feels like it's been detailed by a professional cleaning crew, side sleeping is the elite strategy. But there is a catch, because there is always a catch. Gravity is a cruel mistress to your face. Smushing your cheek into a pillow for 2,500 hours a year creates sleep lines, which are permanent wrinkles etched into your skin simply because you refuse to sleep on your back. And let's not ignore the shoulder situation. When you sleep like a log, your entire body weight is crushing one specific shoulder joint into the mattress. This cuts off circulation and compresses nerves, leading to that fun sensation where you wake up and your arm feels like a dead fish that belongs to a stranger. It's called paresthesia, but you probably just call it the reason I dropped my alarm clock. Now, if the idea of crushing your arm sounds unappealing, you might swing to the opposite end of the spectrum. You don't want to curl up, and you don't want to be stiff. 
You want to reach out. You want to grasp the unseen. Enter the yearner. This is a variation of side sleeping where your arms are stretched out in front of you, like you are chasing a bus in a dream or begging a ghost for a glass of water. The yearner is a fascinating biomechanical compromise. You get all the brain cleaning, airway opening benefits of side sleeping, but by extending your arms, you are opening up the chest slightly more than the log. It relieves some pressure on the lower shoulder by shifting the center of gravity. However, you are playing a dangerous game with your nerves. Stretching those arms out puts tension on the brachial plexus, the network of nerves running from your neck into your arm. Wake up with numb fingers? That's the yearner tax. But there is a specific nuance here that we need to address. Which side are you yearning on? This isn't just a coin flip, it's a matter of internal plumbing. Your stomach is an asymmetrical organ, it curves to the left. If you sleep on your right side, gravity forces stomach acid to leak into your esophagus. Hello heartburn, hello G-E-R-D. But if you flip to the left side, the stomach sits lower than the esophagus. Gravity keeps the acid where it belongs, in the fiery pit of your gut, digesting that midnight pizza instead of burning a hole in your throat. If you have acid reflux and you aren't sleeping on your left side, you are fighting a battle you cannot win. But maybe you don't care about acid. Maybe you don't care about brain drainage. Maybe you just want to lie flat and face the ceiling like a brave little toaster. This brings us to the most disciplined, most terrifyingly still position of them all, the soldier. Flat on your back, arms at your sides, legs straight. You look like you are in a casket or perhaps undergoing a system reboot. For your spine, this is arguably the holy grail. When you lie flat on your back, your head, neck, and spine are in neutral alignment. No twisting, no crunching, no weird torque. The mattress supports the natural curve of your lumbar spine, assuming your mattress isn't a 30-year-old hammock. Your face is free to breathe, meaning no sleep wrinkles and no acne caused by drooling into a bacteria-filled pillowcase. You are preserving your vanity and your vertebrae simultaneously. But while your spine is singing hallelujah, your throat is fighting for its life. Back sleeping is the nemesis of the airway. When you lie flat, gravity pulls your jaw and your tongue backward. The soft tissues of your throat collapse. The result? Snoring. Loud, wall-shaking, marriage-ending snoring. If the fetal position is for safety, the soldier position is for broadcasting your location to everyone in a three-mile radius. For people with sleep apnea, this position is dangerous. You are essentially choking yourself repeatedly all night. But if you have a strong airway and a bad back, the soldier is the gold standard of orthopedic rest. However, some people find the soldier too restrictive. They need freedom. They need to occupy space. They need to assert dominance over the entire mattress. Enter the starfish. This is back sleeping with an attitude. Arms up near the head, legs spread wide. You look like you just fell from a 20-story building and landed in a patch of soft grass. The starfish is rare. Only about 5% of people sleep like this, but it has some weirdly specific benefits. By having your arms up, you are opening your chest even more than the soldier. It can help with shoulder pain for some, as it takes the weight off the rotator cuff entirely. But the real magic is in the cooling. By spreading your limbs, you are maximizing surface area for heat dissipation. If you run hot, if you are a furnace at night, the starfish is your radiator. But the downsides are aggressive. Having your arms up above your head for eight hours can impinge the ulnar nerve in your elbows. This is how you wake up with claw hand, where your pinky and ring fingers are numb and useless. And just like the soldier, the starfish is a snoring factory. In fact, it might be worse, because your mouth is more likely to fall open, turning your throat into a dry, dusty cavern. 
Finally, we arrive at the rebels, the outliers, the people who look at the biology of the human body and say, no thanks, the stomach sleepers, the free fallers. You lie face down, hands tucked under the pillow, head turned to the side like you are listening for hoofbeats in the earth. Let's be blunt. Most chiropractors consider this a crime against the spine. Think about the geometry. To breathe, you have to twist your neck 90 degrees to the side. Imagine walking around all day with your head turned sharply to the right. You wouldn't do it, but you do it for eight hours at night. This constricts the vertebral artery and puts massive torque on the cervical spine. You are effectively sway-backing yourself all night. So why do people do it? Because it feels protective. It prevents you from feeling exposed. And, weirdly enough, it eliminates snoring almost entirely. You can't choke on your tongue if gravity is pulling it out of your throat. For severe snorers who can't tolerate side sleeping, the stomach is a desperate last resort. And there is some strange evidence linking stomach sleeping to certain personality traits. Defensiveness, maybe? Or a feeling of being out of control during the day, so you literally hold on to the mattress at night. But the price is high. Neck pain, lower back pain, and the wrinkles. Oh, the wrinkles. You are smashing your face into the pillow with the maximum force of gravity. If you wake up looking puffy and distorted, blame the free faller. So, where does this leave us? Is there a winner in the Sleep Olympics? The truth is, your body is smart. It usually picks the position that minimizes your immediate pain. If you have a bad hip, you won't sleep on it. If you can't breathe, you'll roll over. But knowing the mechanics gives you the power to tweak. If you are a back sleeper snoring the house down, Try taping a tennis ball to the back of your shirt to force a side roll. If you are a stomach sleeper with neck pain, try ditching the pillow entirely to flatten your alignment. If you are a side sleeper with lower back agony, put a pillow between your knees to square up your hips. Sleep is not a passive activity. It is a performance. If you spend a third of your life doing something, you might as well be good at it. Now, I want to know. Which one are you? Are you the drooling zombie, the rigid soldier, or the chaotic starfish taking up 90% of the bed while your partner clings to the edge for dear life? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the biology of your bedtime,